is the position of this room. I sort of came to remind you guys that um, the protest has started again. And that, you remember like we said that time, that hey, revival is going to be like that end SARS protest. Imagine it happening in Ibadan, happening in Sokoto, happening in in uh, Kaduna, happening in Uyo, happening in Imo State, all at the same time. Hello, it is happening <laughs> everywhere now. So um, maybe we should start that conversation again right on what the revival will look like and what a protest will look like and maybe this is also an opportunity for us to sort of create uh, or curate the spiritual prototype of what we're experiencing right now okay because revival always stems out of some people getting uh, uncomfortable with the status quo you know and so many things like that that i quite agree you know with in 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 the in the terms of uh, when people say a revival Revival is similar to what happens in a post protest. I shall just came to remind you that protest in Enola Wayin, right? And we 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 need to kick start conversations again, you know, and if possible, also just galvanize, you know, people together to also create a spiritual prototype of what is going on uh, with the protest uh, currently now. Okay. Uh, I see some people coming. Who are these? Hi. Maybe they're in the wrong compound. Seems they're in the wrong compound. I didn't just come to enter inside cow because I want to show you people car. No, it's because I need to stay close to the internet, right? And I have kids at home. Uh, who might not be interested in this conversation. <laughs> so what's the point of doing this ID life inside the living room and disturbing other people? But this is the closest I can stay with the internet. So that's why I come into the car because at the same time, it gives me some level of exclusivity. All right. Uh, so what's the main reason I came here uh, today? I've been looking at principles of revival and particularly one which stands out to me is the fact that the revival starts or a revival starts with just one individual who is the spark. So it takes just one spark for a revival to start. And I ran into a story called uh, the Kirk of Shots Revival. It's a revival that took place in 1630 in a place in Scotland called Scots, called Shots, S-H-O-T-T. -T. And this revival was kick-started uh, by an individual whom God used as the torch or as the spark. And his name is... Uh, John Livingstone, John Livingstone, right? This was a very young guy who didn't even deem himself fit to be part of, you know, what was going on. He was invited to come and speak because at that time, the religious reformation had already started. The Christian church was beginning to shift from Catholicism and people like John Knox, Martin Luther had already laid the precedence, you know, of all of these things to happen, John Calvin, and all of that argument was already going on. So many Christians had shifted from Catholicism and now they wanted to, fellowship together the way that God would have them do as people who know that faith in Christ Jesus saves alone uh, uh, they now began to gather together but the challenge at that time was the fact that there weren't enough priests to administer the communion because now they could administer the communion freely they didn't have to pay for it they didn't have to seek permission for it but priests were not enough to administer so they would gather together in a place called shots to have like a combined service and they will run this service for like three days so on the third day or the last service this guy was called upon to minister and he had told them he wasn't going to now that is my part of call he re refused he said he, he wasn't qualified he didn't want to preach so imagine this kind of man whom god has already spotlighted to do the work of the revival and he's refusing he's shy he's uncomfortable he's intimidated and that is what is happening today sometimes 
and I'm not saying this, I mean, I'm saying this like generally. So if you live in another continent and you found this, it applies to you, especially because Nigeria, I mean, we have plenty of revivalists already. But you're in, if you're in, a, in another African counting country, you're in Botswana, you're in Namibia, you're in Mozambique, you're in Morocco, you're in Kenya, you're in Libya, you're in Chad, you're in Algeria, you're in another country altogether. This applies to you. If you're in another continent you're in asia korea china you know all of this indonesia all of these other places where it looks like the name of christ has not been named i personally believe that god is already earmarking people like he's anointing people he's calling people for that work and they're not even aware of it so like john livingstone you're wondering okay uh I, I can't do this i'm intimidated i can't be the priest you know because at that time i think he was a chaplain he was like a, a priest in training and I, I, I can't be among all of these ordained minister listen you are still the one that god is calling so let me continue with the story the guy now gets the the uh, the, the, the invitation he's been praying 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 that god should help him that god should teach him that god should give him a message and every time he prayed he also kept having that irk feeling like no, 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 I'm not going to do this. And on that fateful day, he arrives at the venue. They called him up to speak. This guy was still carrying that insecure feeling. He was still carrying that sense of insecurity. And he ran. He left the podium. He, he walked out of the of, of the company. He, he started leaving. He started running away from the building. And then all of a sudden, a verse from Ezekiel just gripped his heart. God literally just gripped his heart with that, with that scripture. And then he turned back and then he saw the building from a distance and he walked right back in. Then he picked a scripture again from that same book of Ezekiel and he began to speak to them how that the judgment of God is coming. You know, literally just like Elijah or John the Baptist telling them that the judgment of God is coming and that God is interested in washing them with pure water. God is interested in washing them clean. And as he spoke that, brain started. Rain started and the people began to do for shelter. People began to do for a way to cover themselves. And he began to tell them, hey, the way you're running away from, from this rain is the way, how, how then will you be able to run away from judgment? How will you be able to run away from judgment? And that thing gripped their heart so much. And then they began to fall under the anointing. Can you imagine that? Can you imagine that happening in 2024? It can happen. And God confirmed that word and then rain started to fall and they began to surrender their lives and to give their lives to Christ and they began to believe. And in that day, that one singular day, they recorded 500 souls that came to Christ by faith. Listen to me. Revival always starts with a spark. That spark is the individual whom God chooses to use. Away with that mentality of, oh, it could have, could have been somebody else. If God just chose to use me. It's just some level of uh, prophetic insecurity or trying to be humble unnecessarily. God uses the face of a man to do revival. And that is the truth. Every revival you know in history has notable men and women associated with them. Healing revival, Catherine Kuma, Welsh, Re Welsh revival. What's his name? What's his name? What's his name? Somebody find his name for me. Help me put it in the comment section. Okay. Great Awakening, Jonathan Edwards, George Whitfield, Methodist revival, John, John Wesley. Revivals, revivals everywhere. Each one will have a face to it. Even the ones that look like it was like a community community da 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 uh like the layman's revival where everybody just started praying there was still a man who god used to call those those prayers to together okay so we need to uh know that god wants to use us in our territory and don't run away read the jo the story of jonah you will see him literally running away at the verse, verse, one, verse four of the book of Jonah chapter one. One, one translation said Jonah went the opposite direction. God sent him to Nineveh. He went to Tashish. But he still faced the consequence. When you don't obey God, you put other people's lives at risk, at jeopardy. One, those who, who need to be blessed by you and those whose, whose time you are wasting, fraternizing with them and, and running away from God. 
okay so i'm sweating so much right now uh, which means i need to get out of this car as soon as possible i think the next thing i want you to always bear in mind is that when you step out god will back up back you up just like he did for this guy jo called john john new john let's say john newton uh what's he called john livingstone god will back you up god will back you up god will back you up another thing i thought to say is how names repeat themselves or in time you see, 1630 records John Livingstone. And then somewhere in um, 18, 1810, we find David Livingstone. Okay, I'm, I'm just saying like, this is just a thought in my head. There is a way names repeat themselves in revival. And I'm wondering, how is that even possible? There's a guy on YouTube called Steve Hills. He's an anointed worshiper. And I am... Still wondering how this guy has not yet realized, or maybe he has, uh, that there is a guy, there's a man in history whose name is Steve Hills. And he was the one God used for the Pentecostal revival uh, that happened. I mean, it's, it's, it's not too far distant history. It's also called the Brownsville revival. The, the man preached a message on the first day, on Father's Day. And the power of God broke out in that assembly. Well, like you all know, the principle of revival states that revival will be preceded by extraordinary prayers. So the pastor of that particular church had been praying endlessly for revival. And it took place on that Father's Day with, um, what's his name? Steve Hills. So I don't know how names try to repeat themselves, right, in this whole revival stories, but I'm beginning to notice it. And I just thought to let you guys know. Uh, so I need to go now if, as much as I would have loved to speak about, you know, uh, speak a little more on extraordinary prayers and how that um, revivalists or revival enthusiasts sort of burn out quickly i've not seen anyone whose convictions oscillate like don't like like that of revivalists or revival enthusiasts and that's mainly because what you are praying about you you don't tend to see it even though it is already taking place imagine you taking prayer walks in your estates and somehow even the spiritual climate still doesn't change you're the one who feels it is not changing but it is changing and things are happening but that's that that inability to sense it and see See it many, many times because God withholds it is because is the cause rather of you know that oscillation in in revivalists yeah up today down tomorrow today they talk like they're really convinced like i'm doing right now and then tomorrow it's like their, their light is out okay uh another thing is uh, well i just had to say that so you can be encouraged as a revival enthusiast to continue praying another thing is uh uh, uh the inability to contextualize uh events right something has happened in 19 1904 Welsh Revival, for instance, how are you able to contextualize it today? So for me, when I read revival stories, what I do is not just to gather information. I look in between the lines and I bring out prayer points because I know that my role is to pray the revival in. So I, I bring out prayer points. Imagine this uh, arc of shots, crack of shots revival that I just told you. Prayer points... I drew out prayer points from it, which we prayed with in Student of, our, uh, of Awakening and Revival, so, right? First of all, that God will raise that spark in my territory and that God will use me as that spark also in the territories of the world. And then you pray that, you know, for as many who God has called, God is using, you, you, we, we, you, you remove the spirit of timidity, of fear out of them. Okay, and then asking God again to confirm his word by signs and wonders like he did. Because what God has done before, he seeks to do again in a mightier way. What did he do before? A revival. A revival. The, the cack of shots revival. A man came out to preach boldly and he confirmed it with signs confirmed this word with signs and wonders he wants to do it again in your time and you can pray about it so a lot of people are unable to contextualize revival story in today's world let alone drawing prayer points out of it you need to be able to do that as an intercessor not be for mouth not be not be badge no, 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 no. The role of an, the, 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 the calling of an intercessor is not to hold a badge or to, to fill a front row in a meeting. Eh, eh, it is work. 
It is prayers and it is right prayers. It is informed prayers. Thank you so much for joining me on this IG Live. Please share it with somebody else. But don't forget what I've said. Revival principle one, it always starts with a spark. Revival principle two, it, it revival will be preceded by extraordinary prayers, not extraordinary singing. I'll see you in the next video. Until then, do stay safe, stay sane, and have a wonderful time. God bless you. Bye-bye.